Let's bring in Doug Collins, former Georgia congressman and ranking member of the House Judiciary Committee. Look, you're going to hear a lot about Hunter today. You're going to hear a lot about the extended Biden family. But let's face it, today is the day that we are expected to learn how this all ties back to the president. In your estimation, how many times are we going to hear the words China and CCP today? A bunch. I think that's the problem that you're going to hear, and I think uh, the investigative committee, James Comer, is laying this out. They're going to lay it out in a methodical way of saying, here's the bank records, here's what we're seeing coming in. And going back and tying together things, I think the one thing that we were missing here, a lot of this has sort of been known. I mean, this is not completely new. I mean, when we were in, I was in Congress, I mean, when the uh, last election was going on, you were hearing these uh, conversations. You saw the Ukraine connections. You saw the China connections. These were all being made, but the mainstream media never picked it up. In fact, it was just pushed to the side. So today is putting it front and, and center for the American people to say, okay, make your own judgments here. And the White House statement about the committees not um, investigating in transparency, were they talking about the Democratic committees from last Congress? Uh, I don't know here. This is really wild. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like this committee has done so much more in such a small amount of time than the Democrats had their entire term. Um, but I, ha I have to ask you this. You sat in this position, mm -hmm. in Comer's position. He would not be saying what he's saying, telling DOJ, hey, hold up on this until you see what we have, unless what he had was completely explosive information for them. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I mean, do you think this could really lead to other indictments if they do hold off? Well, this is a scary part. From my position in the judiciary, having to work with DOJ, this is where this whole thing is is sort of bottlenecked, if you would, at this point, because the DOJ is not investigating everything that has been put before them, and that's been the problem all along. Here's the concern I have. Everybody keeps talking about the DOJ's imminent uh, indictment of Hunter on, you know, tax evasion or this gun charge. What about drugs, prostitution, everything yeah. else? It's like, you know, take a pick here. There's a long list, but it just shows that why has that been so hard? Why has the gun charge been so hard? Because you're looking at this from a fact. It's, it's a fact, not fiction. It's there. And so I think what the committee is trying to do is say, look, there's all this other information so that the outside world will know and hopefully put some pressure on DOJ and Merrick Garland to say, we need to take this case seriously instead of what we're doing. And boy, I'd just like to point out that yesterday the news came out that George Santos is going to be arrested under federal charges. Boy, that happened pretty quick, huh? <laughs> I mean, he just got into office in January and boom, already uh, we're already putting him in handcuffs, whereas Hunter Biden, to your point, took a really long time. Look, I agree with you. I think if the evidence is as damning as expected and the DOJ doesn't act, it's clear Clear they are a 100% partisan organization. But still, Joe Biden's going to have to go on the road and campaign going into next year. How can he win an election if these charges are as as great as we are expecting them to be? Well, there are many of us still asking that same question from two and a half years ago, how he wanted to start with by staying in the basement and never asking questions. What you're going to see is he's going to have to answer, and the White House is terrified of this. This is what the whole Democratic—I have Democratic friends who are saying— we really don't want to go into this election cycle with Joe Biden because, number one, he can't handle these questions. Even last night in his mini press conference, because the Washington Post goaded him into it, his answers were just basically repetitive and over and over, and he doesn't answer the, the real issues that we're going for. And when he has to start getting into questions he doesn't like, he will get mad, and this is going to be a problem for them. It'll be I'll clean up on aisle five for any time he goes out and tries to explain how Hunter Biden, how he's done everything right, and he's so very proud of his son, but yet you have this long list of the things that he's done. Yeah, it's taken Abby Lowell around the block <laughs> to try to yeah. present this in a cogent way. And he's a really good attorney, no matter what you think of it. Joe Biden, not a really good attorney. I've spent all of my life trying to, you know, either through the pastorate, through chaplaincy, through members of Congress and being a lawyer. There's no way there's enough words to try and spin Hunter Biden yeah. into looking good. Yeah. Well, we do have to switch gears now um, to the debt ceiling. This has yeah. also been a, a very hot topic in Congress. So President Biden and House Republicans are preparing to meet again Friday on their debt ceiling after negotiations came up short yesterday. Here is Speaker McCarthy. Let's listen to this and we'll talk about it. Okay. Unfortunately, in this meeting, I heard nothing new. I literally asked the president personally, do you believe there's any place in government we could find savings? I didn't find progress. Um, in this meeting. Staff will continue to meet and we'll get back together on Friday and hopefully the president then can change the path for the last 97 days. You know, sometimes I wonder what in the world are they doing in Congress? So we get back together, we'll get back together, we're gonna talk. So say the government <laughs> does run out of money in a couple weeks, hypothetically speaking, okay? If they cannot come to an agreement. Right. How does that fall back on the American taxpayer? 
Well, it falls back on a lot of things because you have the, the debt and credit of the country put in, in risk. You'll see the interest rate, you know, the, the, our, our credit rating was downgraded in 2013 mm -hmm. when this went through this the last time. So you will see it as a trickle effect rate on down in, in the markets, the banking markets, the financial markets, as they lose value, those kind of things. But the problem here is, is this is, look, let's face it, this debt is already spent. Okay, we're not talking about you know raising a cap for money that we want to spend. This money's already been spent, so this debt would have to be raised because we've already spent this money through the previous 200 plus years. This is how we got here. What he's looking for, and what I think the Republicans have gotten to do, is get a win here, get something out of the House bill that they passed, one or two things, and then move to the real issue, which is the appropriations process. Here's what the president thinks about all this. Take a listen. And I've said all along, let's discuss what we need to cut, what we need to protect what new revenue we can raise, and how to lower the deficit to put our fiscal house in order. But in the meantime, in the meantime, we need to take the threat of default off the table. Look, Doug, this is a really wonky process. You know how the sausage is made. You've been in these rooms. The sausage is often made at the last minute. But are you legitimately concerned that Biden somehow is not going to cave, that he is going to remain stubborn, even though he really doesn't have the leverage here, and that we are going to go into default? Not at the end of the day, no. Uh, Biden, let's, let's do revert back for a number of years ago. Biden was the ultimate deal maker in, uh, in, when he was in the Senate. He was the one that was called on at the last minute. He was the one that get in the room and shuck and jive and say, okay, let's come to this agreement. Also remember, this president also voted against the debt ceiling. So this, is, this moral purity that he's trying to have now just doesn't exist. But at the end of the day, as I've said many times, the Republicans have put forth their plan. And if the, it has been into the Senate, now when we get to this part where you have one side who said, here's what we would like to do, the other side says, we're not going to do any of this, when the normal imagine, um, you know, American people can sit there and look and say, look, you have to adjust your budget when something's not right. If he get one or two of these, then that's a win for the Republicans. If the Republicans can get any concession at all, they need to declare it as victory, all voted in, and then move on to the real issues, which is going to be the spending. Also, it bothers me here for the American people this morning, listen, they're talking about projected deficit cuts. They're talking about projected debt cuts. This is, a, this is where the, the smoke and mirrors comes in. This is not real money cuts. This is what, when Joe Biden said, we cut 1.6 No, they didn't. They just, uh, that says, if we spent on this level, it would right. be cut. It's not like you and I who have to have a paycheck and says, okay, I've got $1,000 here. How do I cut it? Well, I'm not going to spend $2,000 this month. That's good because you only have 1000 right. This is where we're at. I won't spend 200 at the grocery store. Exactly. I'll spend 100 right. Yeah, it's totally different. We have to get your, your take on this, though, okay. because the national champion <laughs> Georgia Bulldogs declined the invitation to visit the White House. The team says, unfortunately, the date suggested is not feasible given the student-athlete calendar and time of year. However, we are appreciative of the invitation and look forward to other opportunities for Georgia teams moving forward. I think you might be a Georgia Bulldogs fan. What do you think? Oh, a what little bit. Think? Just slightly. a little. Just what do you, slightly. What do you think slightly. about this? And two of my sons, I have put many money into the university. <laughs> oh. Well, first off, go dogs, number one. You know, <laughs> look, this, where was this invitation in earlier this year? Yeah. Why was this invitation not right after the national championship? Which, by the way, they had to be pointed out that they had never gotten an invitation before now. And you wait till after finals, when there's spring break, all these, uh, you know, the draft has happened, the kids are gone. And now they're wanting to do this. That was, this is, a, again, this is the Biden administration. This is classic Biden administration. We messed up. We'll wait a few months, try and fix it. And they say, we tried to fix it. They're the ones that turned us down. No, go dogs next year. <laughs> I love it. Love combining college football and the Biden <laughs> failures all in one day. Oh my Doug goodness. Collins, not only are you our tallest guest, but I'd like to say <laughs> you're one of our best, if not our best guests. We love having you in studio. Thank you so Glad much. Thank you so Glad much. Nice seeing you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.